and put this one into port there. Point that one to 35 degrees. Oh, good. Hey, listen. I need to tell you this real quick before they hear about it. Listen, there is a competition that is going on right now, and it's all about who is the best hacker. Oh, okay. Switching. Okay. So, listen. We all need to show what kind of hacks that we can do. So, you know, if you can, like, hack these little things, or you can do cell phones, or whatever this is, you know, we just need to figure out who the best hacker is of us. I've actually been practicing. I actually put a chip into my finger to try to hack, you know, my own psyche and my own brain. But I don't, I don't really think it, think it worked, but we never know. So, you know, come join me and we will try to become the best hackers ever. So, yeah. Super Hack Override is just what Hacker Guy was just talking about. It is a competition amongst hackers to try to out hack each other and have the most points at the end of the game. So let me show you how the game works. I've went ahead and set up for a three player game. Now, this game can be played with or without a surface. So if you really want to, this game can be played like in line while you are waiting at a convention. This can be played anywhere where table space is, is not a luxury. So you will each start off with a hand of cards. And when they are in your hand, just like so, they are considered face in. So they'll be facing you and they're not worth any points when they're face in. Eventually, when you play a card, you will place it face out. So if you place it face out and you're playing the non-table version, you're going to point it away from you, and then that is the number of points that you are currently scoring. So if I play my sock puppet, I'm actually scoring one point towards the end of the game. Now, if you're, not, if you're playing with a table, when you play a card face out, you're just going to play it right in front of you. Now there are different types of hacks that do different types of things. Like for example, this sock puppet is a reaction card, so you can play it when somebody tries to do a hack on something that you own. Uh, there is uh, something like this tracer spoof that you can play out in front of you, and it will protect you from the number two hack, which is the screen door. Uh, there is the screen door, which is a proxy hack, which allows you to start swapping around cards and stuff like that. So. When you have cards in front of you, what you can do, let's just say that these were in front of uh, this player right here. So on my turn, I can either play a card from my face-in cards and place it face out in front of me, or I can go ahead and activate one of my opponent's hacks that they have face out and do what it says, and those can get shuffled around, moved around to other players, so you're always manipulating the board. Now, the way you win is you have the amount of points for your player count, which is actually on this card right here, once it focuses. So if we're playing a three-player game, if we get 32 points, that is uh, who will win the game. Now, the other way to be eliminated from the game are these government hacks. Now these government hacks are really, really lucrative. They're worth a lot of points. They're worth a lot more than the other hacks that are in the game. The problem with these is once you get a certain amount of these, you go to hacker jail. And nobody wants to go to hacker jail. So if we look at our card here, um, this card, if we're playing a three-player game, if you get three government hacks, then the government traces you and you go to the hacker jail. Then you're out of the game. When you're out of the game, any hacks that were still face in on you get put out in front of you. Those are face out for other players to go ahead and use and manipulate. But you're out of the game and there's nothing that you can do. If you're the last person standing because everybody got the appropriate amount of government hacks, then you will be the winner of the game. 
So eliminate everybody or collect the most points to become the winner of Super Hack Override. This program is part of the Pathological Nerdcasters Network. Find more at pncn.rocks, where all the geeks come to play. So that is briefly how to play Super Hack Override. There is a ton of stuff that you can do in this game. There are, you know, back and forth, and I really like that you can play off of your opponent's cards when they're out. They're not just there scoring them points. You can go ahead and play that and try to manipulate that card or use another card to pull away some big points away from them. It does make it very interesting as to how you want to manipulate everything and, and make everything work. I also really like that you can play it with a table or without a table. That does make it very versatile and very easy to, to play in places where you normally wouldn't play um, a game or anything like that. So this could be easily played outside at the beach or, you know, just someplace where games typically aren't found. So if this looks like something that you'd be interested in, you can go over to Kickstarter and back this game as soon as it is available. I'll have a link down below because it is going on there very, very soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and help support Cloak and Meeple. I'm going to have my support link right over there and my subscribe link right down below. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Also, in case any of you were wondering, this is actually a legit injury. This isn't a prop at all, so ouch.